I'm Cameron Bostick, and coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you why some state officials are worried about empty classrooms. I'm Melissa Aquavella, and coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you the pros and cons of online dating. I'm Lauren McMillan, and coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you why Mon County is one of three counties in the state without an active farm protection board. Our Emmy Award winning WVU News starts now. Another school year has started and West Virginia's education system is seeing a major increase in teacher vacancies. I'm Emily Swecker. And I'm Paige Madden. The Mountain State leads the nation in family-owned farms. Coming up, I'll tell you why these farms may be in jeopardy. These stories and more on WVU News, an Emmy Award-winning newscast produced by television journalism students right here at West Virginia University. Farming generates almost $1 billion in income to the state each year. But now, farmers are at risk of losing their livelihood. Reporter Lauren McMillan joins us now in the studio with more. Lauren? Thanks, Emily and Paige. The West Virginia Farmland Protection Act was put into place to help farm owners protect their farms and their land. Unfortunately, Monongalia County is one of three counties in the state without funding. This farmland funding may cause an increase for taxpayers, but I found out how farmers are at risk of losing their county farms due to an inactive farm protection board. And one farmer says he's ready to fight for his legacy. For 85-year-old Chuck Hunter, it's just another day on the dairy farm. Open since 1927, the farm has been passed down six generations, but he fears that will soon come to an end. A few generations or several generations down the road, there isn't going to be any farmland, any place. To help preserve this lush green space, 20 counties in the state have created farm protection boards. Mon County is one of three in the program without funding, but Commissioner Ed Hawkins is pushing to make it active. The commission is permitted to put a tax on property transfer. Now there's already one stamp that you have that goes one to the state and one that is kept in the general fund. The voluntary program allows farmers to donate or sell an easement for their property to the board. Once that easement is in place, the future of the farm is protected. But many farmers like Chuck worry about big business. According to American Farmland Trust, two acres of farmland is lost every minute in America due to development. But it's that development that keeps the county thriving. Commissioner Tom Bloom is concerned that farm preservation could put a burden on taxpayers. There's not that interest or need here. So that, that's why I have a question why we would even go through this, collect this money, and then put it aside and just always leave it there because it would be, it'd be untouchable. I'll run it as far as I can and as long as I can and then turn it over to the next generation and see what happens. While no decision has been made, Chuck says he's determined to keep his property from getting plowed over. County commissioners are urging the public to voice their opinions on the issue. If you would like to share your thoughts, you can contact the commission office at the email on the bottom of your screen. Paige and Emily, back to you. Thanks, Lauren. While some are trying to preserve the land, others are using it to build up the economy. Forbes magazine recently named Morgantown as the best small metro for business and careers. And millions of dollars are being poured into developing areas in Star City and Suncrest. I found out how much the construction will impact the surrounding communities and the state of West Virginia. New businesses and the new ball field in Star City are just the beginning of a three-phase TIF district. After realizing Morgantown was landlocked, developers started looking elsewhere to increase economic development in the area. I think that it's going to bring a lot of growth to the community. It's just exactly what um, West Virginia needs. The enhancements to the TIF district include 300,000 square feet in University Town Center and 100,000 square feet in Westover, generating $900 million a year for Monongalia County. The biggest news that everyone's waiting to find out is we have a letter of intent of a Fortune 500 company that will move their headquarters or one of their headquarters down there, which would be 500 to 600 white collar jobs. The new FedEx Distribution Center here in Westover is scheduled to open in 2016 and will be a completely different economic driver due to its location near the interstate as well as the airport. Residents are very excited about the new restaurants, 
but are hopeful that grocery stores such as Kroger and Trader Joe's will come in soon. I would like to see um, some upscale um, grocery stores and um, maybe some healthier grocery stores that um, would invite us all to to live a little healthier. In addition to the distribution center, residents will soon see popular businesses such as Starbucks and Chipotle in the area. These new developments are only the second phase of the project. The third involves building affordable housing for people moving to the area. Experts say Morgantown's economy will continue to grow over the next five years. And while some parts of West Virginia are expanding, the number of teachers in the state is declining. And Emily, many experts say the reason is simple. That's right, Paige. Teachers in West Virginia don't get paid as much as neighboring states. As Cameron Bostick reports, in the past decade alone, teachers' salaries in the Mountain State have dropped by almost 7%. Teaching vacancies are on the rise in the Mountain State. According to officials, the state is short about 200 positions. Sam Brunette, an art teacher at Morgantown High School and a teacher's union president, talked about how the state can attract more teachers. I think we really have to start focusing on bringing our teachers' pay scales up to, to be competitive with neighboring states. With the Mountain State having such low teacher pay, are new teachers going to stay? Um, probably not, just because I really love Out West and I love how things are going there. I like the pay there as well. Losing teachers to other states is nothing new for West Virginia. The Mountain State ranks 45th in teachers' wage disparity, 43rd in number of hours worked, and 42nd in 10-year change of teacher salaries. West Virginia teachers make an average salary of around $42,000. I asked Morgantown High School assistant principal <laughs> John Lewis what needs to change to fill the empty teaching jobs. Well, I think, I think counties have got to show that they're interested in you as a human being so that they're willing to pay off some of your debt for your services. In the meantime, officials say the vacancies are currently being filled by substitutes or volunteers without a teaching license. Cameron Bostick, WVU News, Morgantown. One in five adults use online dating websites and apps. However, that doesn't mean everyone meets their soulmate. That's right, Paige. With the rising trend of catfishing, a term referring to a deceptive online profile, online daters have become more skeptical of who they are really talking to. Audrey Koontz joins us now from Social Square with the latest in social media and pop culture news. Audrey. Thanks, Paige and Emily. Three, there are th over 100 million single Americans, and with 44% of adults looking for love, online dating has ballooned into a billion dollar industry. But before you join the other 40 million online daters, Alyssa Aquavella will tell you the pros and cons of finding love in cyberspace. One in 10 Americans use an online dating website or app to find love. But the FBI estimates 10% of those profiles may not be truthful. James Jeffers says meeting one of his online matches didn't go exactly as planned. It was a picture from way back when, and he had lost a lot of weight, and he was very tall and lengthy and not as attractive, which is hard for me to say, but whenever you, I went to his house to meet him, and it was just very awkward. I had to walk away. The New York Times says 81% of people lie about their weight, height, or age on their dating profiles. But Dr. Elizabeth Cohen believes that many fake profiles aren't created to harm others. It's not necessarily that people are trying to deceive other people. Um, sometimes it's just that people sort of have a foggy mirror that they look into and they don't see themselves very accurately. The search for love is at an all-time high right now, with over 2,500 dating websites and apps in the U.S. alone. Studies show online dating is a multi-billion dollar industry, but the FBI estimates that online dating scams are contributing to 50 million of these being thrown away every year. The Pew Research Center estimates one-third of online daters have never been on a date with someone they met online, but Jeffers believes online dating is an easier way to meet people. You do get nervous, and like out in public, it's hard to like sometimes make a move. And on there, everyone's looking to date someone, and you don't have to like see if they're single or anything. Experts say 5% of married Americans found love online, and that number is expected to grow in the future. Alyssa Aquavella, WVU News, Morgantown. Other tips for online dating include meeting in a public place, drive yourself to the date and back home, and don't give out your last name initially. Your day could easily find your address and other personal information. 
Thanks, Audrey. A new facility in Monongalia County is creating a lot of buzz around town. Sports reporter Sarah Wells tells us how the Monongalia County ballpark is making national headlines. TV News, I'm Sarah Wells, and if you haven't been to the Monongalia County ballpark, I'll tell you why you're missing out. We're all different. Our interests, our backgrounds can influence our futures. But without focus, they're just dreams. But what if someone could give your interests life? If they could give your background power? If they could fuel what motivates you? That's what gives dreams meaning, purpose. And perhaps that was the moment you knew you wanted to be a mountaineer. The brand new Montegalia County Ballpark has been the home of the West Virginia Black Bears since April, and it's already making headlines. Sports anchor Joe Lipovich joins us now at the desk to tell us what all the fuss is about. Joe? That's right, Paige and Emily. The Montegalia County Ballpark is already receiving positive feedback after opening its gates just six months ago. USA Today announced that the Granville Ballpark is the ballpark of the year for 2015. The Montegalia County Ballpark can seat up to 3,500 people, and those seats are filling up fast. Sports reporter Sarah Wells explains why fans are coming out to the ball game for more than just some peanuts and Cracker Jacks. The Montegalia County Ballpark broke ground in October of 2013, and it's already received recognition in its first season. The new field was recently named the best ballpark in the country, according to Ballparks.com. For Black Bears fan Seth Barbro, it's all that and more. There's not really a lot that goes on in the summer, so having a minor league team here was really cool. It gave me something to do for the summer. Black Bears general manager Matt Dreyer says the ballpark has many beautiful features. Well, the sight lines, the view, you know, the, the backdrop of the ballpark is just fantastic. It's got the open concourse, it's got full sided seating, it's got suites, it has all the modern amenities that a, a minor league baseball fan is looking for in a ballpark. Along with being the best short season single A ballpark in the nation, USA Today Sports Weekly also named it the best ballpark of the year. And the fans agree. Fan interaction was a big reason for the stadium's success in its inaugural season, and Barbro has seen that firsthand. T-shirt tosses for everybody, um, some adult tri like some trivia questions for adults, like a Miller Lite trivia, um, and then they have post-game giveaways. They give out food coupons at every game. A lot of nights there's a pre-game. There's fireworks every Friday. They've done a really good job. Whether it's your first time or 100th time at the ballpark, there's always something to see. Sarah Wells, WVU Sports, Morgantown. The facility costs around $22 million to build. The ballparks are judged on the following criteria, best location, exterior appearance, architectural design, and fan amenities. Paige and Emily, back to you. Thanks, Joe. While some teams are new to the Morgantown area, others have deep roots in the community. WVU fans are expecting another successful season for the women's soccer team after two players return from playing at the most competitive level. That's right, Emily. Midfielder Ashley Lawrence and defender Kadisha Buchanan spent their summer playing soccer with some of the greatest players for the coveted World Cup. Both Lawrence and Buchanan started on the Canadian national team, which advanced all the way to the quarterfinals. Buchanan was awarded the 2015 Hyundai Best Young Player Award. The players returned to WVU's field for their third season. Coach Nikki Izzo-Brown predicts with their experiences from the World Cup and their skills, Lawrence and Buchanan will be the top two draft picks. The women's soccer team is off to a successful season with a 7-1 record. Well, that's going to do it for this week's edition of WVU News. You can visit us online at our website. You can also watch any of our shows on YouTube. And please follow us and our reporters on Twitter. I'm Paige Madden. And I'm Emily Swecker. Thanks for watching WVU News. We'll see you next time.